Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together. Stick around to the end of the video for details on how you can easily win my beginner games course. Tile sets make up a huge part of every game you create. So when you have one, like I've got here from Mana Seed and Salil the Shaper who created it, you can, you can find them on Patreon as well, you download the tile set and bring it in just like a sprite. So I'm just gonna grab the first one we've got here and grab it into the tile set folder. Now when you bring it in, it is a sprite. So I'm just gonna rename it SPR Gentle Forest. And then I'm gonna actually make a tile set out of this sprite. So I'm gonna right click and create tile set. And I use TS as the prefix here. I'm just gonna name it Gentle Forest as well. You can select the sprite or you can grab the sprite and put it over here. And then it shows up. So when we have this, this is now our tile set. And fortunately, this one actually has the right width and height of the tiles already set, but we can look at them over here and we can change it. So the ones you're gonna find most common are eight by eight, 16 by 16, and 32 by 32 for tile sets. 32 by 32 is like a higher resolution, 16 by 16 is older, and eight by eight is like really classic games, and I don't see that one too often. The tile set offset X and Y is if they did not start right here, but this one actually does. Uh, they created it just correctly. It's really, really nice to work with in Game Maker, which is cool. And then you have the separation if there is space in between any of these. The output border X and Y are if you're, if you're going to be scaling your game up or down and kind of has to do with making your game run more efficiently, but we're not going to talk about it any more than that, but you can check out the manual if that interests you. And then disabling source sprite export basically means you are only using this sprite as a tile set, and so Game Maker is not going to look at it any other way. So if you are going to be using this sprite for something else, which I suppose you could, it would just be kind of strange, then you'll want to uncheck that box. Now, inside of here, using a tile set is actually pretty simple if we go with just the basic way of using this tile set. We open up a room, and we have to make a tile layer. Now, when you are designing tile sets and using them inside of Game Maker, you're gonna have lots of tile layers. And the reason is you can only have one kind of tile set on each layer. So right now, we actually have a good deal of things we can use this tile set for. It actually has like trees and waterfalls and everything. But if we wanted to add in maybe some berries or some houses or some boxes that aren't in this tile set, we have to add a new tile layer and then we can choose an entirely new tile set. Now you might also do this when you have the same tile set to add a sense of depth. So if we use this one right here and I add in, let's just add in some ground and I can change the size here. So I'll zoom in and we'll work with a pretty small spot of land over here. Let's say this is what we've got for our tile set right now is this whole section right here. Now you can come in here and you can design different sections of it, which might be kind of cool. I'm not a very good designer, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that. But we've got a ground here, we've got some grass, there you go. This is how you use a tile set. You just choose the parts you want, and then you set it up. Some tile sets actually have things laid out in a fairly large mode, like a whole house will actually be in the tile set itself, whereas other ones you have to construct it tile by tile, which actually makes a lot of sense when you're more of a designer because it's a lot easier to then have infinite variety with a very small tile set. Now the reason for two layers comes in right here. If I wanted to put this over something or if I wanted to use this tree which has transparent pixels, it'll actually get rid of all of the other ones inside of there. But if we go to tile set two and I wanted to put this in here, then it looks just fine because those transparent pixels aren't deleting the other ones on the same layer. So when you're designing a level, you might have five, six, 10 tile layers for the same tile set because you want to layer on lots of different things from the same tile set. That is perfectly normal and is used very commonly. So that's basic tile set design. But the really cool thing in Game Maker is something called Auto Tile, which is what we're gonna look at next. So let's go into the tile set and I'll press F12 to maximize this. You have something called a brush builder, tile animation, and auto tiling. What I'm gonna to tackle today is auto tiling because it's the more complex of them, 
but also the more useful when you start designing larger levels. So we're going to zoom in and we're just going to use this section right here. There are two auto tile templates, 16 and 47. I haven't seen very many 47 auto tile templates, but if we were to look at the Game Maker manual, it actually shows you right here the different kinds of tile sets that you would need. So for 47, you actually need 47 tiles inside of a tile set that all line up exactly to what Game Maker wants. So we don't have anything like that. Instead, we have a 16 one. And you press the plus button and it brings up which tiles you need. Now, I personally find this really difficult to read and understand exactly what they're looking for. But essentially, the darker area is where you want the tile set to be like the main portion. So here, this one, the dark area needs to be grass in the top left corner. So, but it only needs to be a tiny bit of grass. So as we go through here, we're going to select the tiles from this tile set, and then we're gonna be able to just hold it down on our auto tiling and create a level that is dynamic based on how we move our mass mouse around. It's really, really cool. So let's create it now. So the first one we're gonna do is just a regular old patch of ground. Then we're gonna choose this piece of grass over here because it's got the grass in the top left. Then we need the grass in the top right. Now we need a grass in the top section entirely, which is there, then bottom left, then left. Now this one needs to have the empty space in the middle here, even though it's kind of gray. So I'm gonna choose that one. And then we need to choose the grass here, but this one actually needs to have the grass all the way in the left and an empty space in the bottom right corner, which is this one right here. Then we choose this small grass here, which is the other one that looks like this right there. We need the grass on the right over here. Bottom, we need the grass, this one here to empty space on the bottom left. We need the bottom grass there. And we have to have this one and that one. And then finally we choose just a grass one in general. Now that's all of the ones that we need. And assuming I did it right, we can now come in here and I'm actually gonna delete these tiles add a whole nother one just so that we can work with something fresh, choose the same tile set, and then you go over to libraries and you can actually name different auto tiles because we could actually have multiple auto tiling libraries from this one sprite sheet. I think we could come up with something for this one over here as well if we wanted to. But for now, I'm just gonna do this and you can see this is now a square patch of ground. And if I hold down my left mouse button and move this around, it's actually going to be exactly what we need. So you can move this around and you can now design your level really, really quickly. And if I hold right, I actually get a patch of grass that I can use to put inside of there, which is pretty cool. And it looks like I made one little mistake. So if I connect it like this, I can see that I messed up the one, the connecting ones, but we can come back into the auto tile. And this is the one I messed up. So I'm gonna click the clear to delete that and the clear on this one. So those two should actually be reversed. So instead I'm gonna click on this and choose that one and do the same for that. Now if we come in here again and we redo this, we should now have it working correctly. And I think that looks really, really nice. And you can see here that that does line up correctly and now you can very easily scale your game to make a huge level that actually still looks pretty good and auto tiling is basically magic. <laughs> Not really, you now know how to make it and that's exactly how it works. Auto tiling is an extremely powerful feature that allows you to design fairly large levels fairly easily. It's a very cool feature. And if you wanted to do like a 47 template, you'll probably need to actually hire an artist or find a tile set made specifically for Game Maker. And I don't know how many other sprite editing or tile level design software that uses this kind of auto tiling system, which can make it really hard to find just a generic tile set. But auto tiling is just a nice feature. It's not something that you have to have. There are thousands of free tile sets out there that don't have auto tiling in them, and you can still use them to make really, really awesome games. But if you're making a larger scale game, then auto tiling 
can be a really big help. And you can also just take tile sets and move them around and create them yourself, and then you'll be good to go. Now, if you messed up at all in your tile set, it'll turn red because I just actually clicked on several inside of here. And if you've used a tile before, it will turn red because you cannot use the same tile at all. If I go ahead and delete this, then this is still here, but now there's no actual auto tile. Apparently it still remembers it currently because I have it selected somehow, which looks like it's more of a bug in GameMaker than anything else. And there we go, now it's gone. So once you delete it, it's gone, but the tiles still stay there, which is, I guess, kind of cool, something I did not know. And there are probably a lot of things that you don't know about Game Maker yet, and that's okay because you're learning. And if you like a physical book to read through and go through to learn from, you should check out my Kickstarter, which just has a few days left to go, but we are really getting close to the goal. And this book is going to cover everything that we've talked about already and so much more because it's going to take you from knowing nothing to be able to make your dream game by the end of the exercises that are inside of this book. So check it out, and if you're more of a visual learner, then you can check out the beginner course that I've got on here, where we go through this and make a really cool top-down space shooter. And if you use the coupon code NEWBIE when you sign up for this course, you'll get 20% off of it. But if you want to try and wait to win it, the details to win are super simple. Just leave a comment on any of my Game Maker tutorials, and a month after it's been out, I will draw a winner from the comments and send you a message that you have won. And you can use the coupon for this course to use this one for free, or you can use it as a discount on some of my more expensive courses or bundles. I have a series here to take you from beginner to expert in three courses with a lot of content, and you can buy that all in one big bundle as well. And a shout out to all of the awesome people supporting me over on Patreon. If you want to see your name on the screen or get other perks like joining my Discord or one-on-one -on -one training with me, check it out in the description down below. Some links are going to be coming up that you might find useful if you want to keep watching from me, but as I always say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later.